Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Ruben. And in this video, we're going to be looking at syntax. We've been teaching programming for a while. And one of the key things I think when you start to learn to program is to understand the idea that programming is much more about concepts, so programming concepts, than it is about programming language. Yeah, and that sounds really powerful because you know once once I learn these concepts, I, I can apply them to any language. So rather than just being stuck with one language, uh, having an understanding of these concepts will allow me to adapt that to many languages. Yeah, that's right. So what I really need is, I, I'm not at that level yet, so what I need is I need the tools to be able to convert my concepts into code. Well, what we need for that is a way of understanding the rules of the programming languages. So each programming language has its own set of rules for how its code needs to be typed into the computer. And that pretty much tells you if you want to create this thing in your code, so you want to create, say, a program in your code, you type this. Mm -hmm. If you want to create this other thing, like a function or a procedure, which we'll talk about later, you type this. So what we've got to, in order to help with this is there's a book that we've created called The Programming Arcana, because we think programming is pretty magical. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, and The Programming Arcana includes in it syntax diagrams for a number of different programming languages. Uh, and so you can use this to pick up sort of any of those languages. All right, so in order to create a program, what we need to look up in the, the syntax rules, so in the programming arcana, uh, is the syntax for what? It's the syntax for a... Uh, program. Yeah, tough, hey? That... All right, so here's the syntax. We'll start with the Pascal program, so we'll yeah. write it in the Pascal language. Yeah. So here is the syntax diagram uh, related to the rules for Pascal in order to create uh, a program, and it's called a railroad diagram. So you follow along the arrows, you start at the start, and you go yeah. to the end. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and along the railroad, you'll encounter different symbols. Yeah. Yep. These rounded rectangles, which are grey, uh, have things that we type directly in the code. Yep. So for our Pascal program, what are we going to type first? Uh, program, I gather. Yes. Yeah. Yep. This is the good thing about Pascal. You want to create a program, so you create, you type program. Yeah. Yeah. It's not very cryptic, which is which is nice. Uh, all right, so that, that gray box just means that. So in our code at the moment, what we have is just the word program. Yeah. And yep. so we now, we've got past that place, past that point, uh, and you separate it by white spaces. So tabs, new lines, spaces. So yeah. I think at this point we put a space before the next thing. And so the next thing is... We've got an identifier. All right, now that's in a different colored... Yeah, it's, well, it's red or pink. I, yeah. I don't know what you call that, but... Yeah. I don't know either. Pinky. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the pinky colored rectangle is actually another rule. All right. So this is another thing, a term. So in programming, an identifier is the name of something. Yeah. And there is a special rule in Pascal, as in other programming languages, for what an identifier looks like. And so we need to find the identifier syntax. And it tells us an identifier looks like this. Okay. So it's got to have, well, it's got to start with a letter. Okay, well, we've actually got two options here. Notice that the if you follow that railroad yeah. from the very start, yeah. you've got that fork. You could go one way or the other. All right. So it could start with a letter or an underscore. Ah. Uh, that was very difficult. That is actually an underscore. It's not a minus. <laughs> okay. It, yeah. It's the underscore, all right? Sure. It, it's hard to, to tell the difference in this, but that's what it is. Yep. So you got, yeah, so it's a letter or an underscore. Yep. All right, now we've got two different symbols here. So one of them's the square and one of them's the, the round one. Which one would I type directly in? Which one is a different rule? Uh, the round one. Yeah, so the underscore... Is what you would type in. And the letter, that's, that's, that's a separate rule? What do you mean? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. So letter is a separate rule. Underscore I'd type in. So if I want the name of my program to start with an underscore, then I can put an underscore. Yeah. What do we want to call this program? Test program. Yep. Okay. So test program, that means we're going to type a letter. Yeah. Yep. So we can go to letter and oh. a letter is another rule. 
This is how pedantic computers are. All right, computers are unintelligent. They have no brains. Okay. They just follow instructions, and so it needs to be incredibly detailed. Yeah. And so the syntax for a language is right down to every single character that you type in. Mm -hmm. So a letter is literally a letter. It's A, B, C, D, etc. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to start it with a T for a test program. Yep. Yeah. Once we follow the, di the the syntax, well, when we finished our letter, that gets to the end of the letter. Yep. We can now go back. We continue along the syntax diagram. Mm -hmm. And so we could call the program just the letter T. Yeah. Or we could call it just underscore. It's, it's not, not very meaningful. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we can call it test if we follow this down. We can go through letter again. Yeah. We can pick up T E S T. Yeah, yeah. P R O G R A N. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Etc. Yeah. And so the identifier can be test program. Now, in the future, the idea would be you, you only need to look these up sort of the first few times you encounter it until you can work out what the sort of overall rule is. Yeah. So we can see here the rule for this is effectively it's got to start with a letter or an underscore and then it can have letters, digits and underscores inside yeah. it. Yep. So we could have test program, but we couldn't have test space program. We, because, but you could have test underscore program? Yeah, that's right. You could yeah. have test underscore program. We could have test 23 program. Okay. Yeah. But I couldn't have 23 program yeah yeah because it can't start with a number no yeah yeah okay so that's now our our valid identifier so at the moment what we will have in our code is program followed by by test program yeah and so we now go back to the program syntax so we finished our identifier mm -hmm. what comes next uh that looks like a semicolon yep and notice it's in the gray it's in a gray rounded rectangle yeah uh, so that means what do i do with this uh, well, it has to have that. Yeah, well, we just type it directly yeah, in. Yep. It's, I don't need to look up what a semicolon is. It just means yep. semicolon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and what could come next? Uh, we could, looks like, what, a user's clause? Uh, a block, rather, actually? Yeah, no, no. So it could be a user's clause or a block. Yeah. Because we, we've got an option here. We can put a user's clause in. And so if I did, it would look something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's because a user's clause has users followed by the name of the, the user unit identifier, yep. which is an identifier. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the ad, I could have a number of those separated by commas yep. and then a semicolon. And so this says this, at the moment, this program uses Swing Game, which yep. is a library that we are providing that has sort of functions for audio, video, networking, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of things. Uh, but if we don't want that, then we don't need that uh, user's clause. Yeah. Uh, and so after the user's clause, whether we have it or not, the next thing is going to be our block. Yeah. And so we can find that rule just down here. Yep. And so block starts with... Uh, begin. Yep. So I just type begin in, don't I? You do? Yep. Yeah. Cool. And we could, seeing as we're doing the begin, we could probably also put the end, because each block is a begin end with a number of statements in between. Yeah. So we have begin, we have some statements, mm -hmm. and each statement is a command that tells the computer what to do. Yep. And we then have an end at the end of that. And so we can put our begin end. And at the after our block, we end up with a... We'll come back and put the statements in later. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the block, we have a full stop. Okay. And so that's sort of the, the skeleton of our program's code. Yeah. So in Pascal, that's what we type in order to create a program. Mm -hmm. uh, the statements then, we can have a look at, well, what is a statement? A statement... Uh, at the moment, we have the option of a statement being uh, a procedure call. And when we execute, that's another rule. Yeah. When we execute a procedure call, we need to put the name of the procedure. Yep. And then we can have some brackets with arguments, which are values that we provide to those procedures. Uh, and so here we've got write line, which is a procedure in Pascal yeah. that prints things out to the terminal. And inside the brackets, we can put values that we want to print out. So this is printing out hello world. Uh, but expressions, which are, are values that we use uh, inside our program, you can calculate them in, you know, there's many different types of expressions. So you can have things that are numbers, yeah. like 73, um, or, you know, if you want uh, real numbers, mm -hmm. you could use something like 2.1. Yeah, yeah. Or strings even. Yep. So, so like Hello World yeah. or, or Fred. Uh, multiplication, uh, addition, division. Yeah. Yeah. So any of these things which are the sort of mathematical expressions, so yeah. that they calculate values or they are a value, yep. uh, can be placed in any of those points where, where you've got a, an expression. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, and so we could call in our program, we could call uh, the right line procedure, or maybe we could call that twice. Yeah. And so this should be valid syntax because what we have at each point uh, is we follow the, the rules. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we compile that now, when we run the compiler, you can see that we get some output to say that it's compiled successfully. Yep. And the program is completed successfully. Yeah. Now, if we make some mistakes, uh, like imagine I don't have the end. Yeah. Yeah. And we then save that. If I recompile it, you'll get a compiler error. Okay. Is, is that because the compiler is looking for an end? In this case, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so each, the errors can be cryptic sometimes, yeah. but in each case it tries its best to tell you where it went wrong. But yeah. remember, it's very, very, it's, well, it's more than stupid. Yeah. It, it's unintelligent. So it will do the best it can to sort of try to output you know, some meaningful message, but it can be quite cryptic. And that's why it's really good to understand some of these basic programming terms. Yeah. And I think the really, really key ones are identifier, yep. which is the name of something in your program. Yep. A statement, which is... Something that our, the compiler executes? Yeah, that's right. So it's, it's an instruction. Okay. This is a, a command. Yep. This is what I want done. Do this now. Uh, expression is the other really key one, yeah. uh, which is a value, something that we calculate. So often the error will say something like, you know, this statement was expected. Yeah. So that's something about a command or invalid expression. Okay. It means that calculation doesn't make sense. Yeah. You've got something in there that doesn't compute. Yeah. Uh, or identifier not found. Which Meaning, means that that doesn't exist. Yeah, you can't find that name. Okay. You've got a name there. You've either spelt it wrong. You've got a, you know, something's wrong with the actual name. Yeah. Uh, inside that, that uh, identifier. Yeah. So those... Parts of the syntax are really important to understand. Cool. So I can definitely see how we've applied those concepts to one language. Uh, what about applying them to another language? All right, well, let's have a look at a C program. So this is the code for a C program. Okay. And what we can do is we can have a look at the syntax rules that we use. To, and this, in fact, is exactly the same program. Yeah, well, it, it looks very similar, bar a few differences. Yeah. So if we look at the syntax rules for C... We can see that in C, a program optionally has some header includes. Yeah. And this gives you access to libraries. Okay. Now, Pascal actually gave you some libraries for free. Yeah. Uh, C doesn't give you anything for free. Uh, so you need to, to tell it everything that you want. Yeah. And the one to print things out is the standard I.O. library. Yep. So we, we have to hash include that. Uh, so that's our header include. That mm -hmm. says give me access to that library. And we can see that's just followed those rules there Yeah. yeah in order to do that. Once we've got that, we then have a main function. This is where C programs enter, just like the begin yep. in a, uh, a Pascal program. And so we just type the code in here. Yeah. And we have a block. That, that's exactly the same as a Pascal program. Yeah, that's right. That's very similar, isn't it? But a block, instead of typing begin, we have a curly... Braces, yeah, yeah, a brace. Instead of end, you have a, a close brace. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's so massively different. Nobody yeah. would ever you know, be able to pick that up on their own. Uh, sorry. Being very sarcastic here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we have statements. So notice that C still uses the idea of statements. It still has the idea of identifiers. If we look, say, at the, a C procedure call, you know, yeah. you've got the name of the procedure, which is an identifier. You have yep. brackets, which is like the same as, as Pascal. And then you've got arguments. It's, this terminology is pretty much the same across programming languages. Yeah. So all that's different is some small things like braces instead of begin and end. Uh, at, the bigger thing, though, I think that's different are, are like printf. Yeah. Uh, so the different features or different things the libraries provide you do change, and that takes a little bit of time to pick up, but the core of the language is the same. Okay, so basically I, I can do the same thing in many different languages. It's just getting used to uh, the visual differences in syntax. Yes, that's yeah. it. Yeah, so that's why it's really important to focus on understanding the concepts first. Don't stress too much about the syntax. Pick an easy language that's nice to work with, like Pascal. Work through that one. And then when you finish that, you've got the idea. It won't take terribly long. Yeah. It will only take a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, you can then pick up other languages really quickly and build upon that really solid foundation of understanding the concepts. Yeah. All right, that's it for the basic overview of syntax. Uh, what you probably want to have a look at next, so what are some of the other videos we've got? Yeah, so we've got some videos on... Uh, the compiler, uh, installation videos to help you get everything that you need set up and going. 
uh, writing programs. And if, if you're ahead of all of that, why don't you check out the video on variables? Yeah, cool. All right, and that's all we have time for for this video on syntax. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll look forward to, you, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. This has been a Spindone production.